At the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. For the Lord became obedient to death, death on a cross. Therefore, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who will your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the, all, all the power of the enemy, grant your servants, grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face yet I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He, who, he is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let him confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For consolers, not one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I will praise the name of God in song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurs not. Lord, in your great love, The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him that the teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi? He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. There's much that we can learn from this gospel passage. 
And I should say first that the Wednesday of Holy Week sometimes is known as Spy Wednesday. And we can see the reason here. On this day, it's believed that Jesus, Judas rather, made that deal with the chief priest on the Wednesday of that week, two days before Jesus' crucifixion. And so, from that day on, uh, Judas, in effect, became a spy. He was in Jesus' camp, and yet he was a spy. Now, of course, Jesus knew this. Remember, remember, Jesus was controlled in control of the situation the entire time. Nevertheless, Judas was a spy at that point. And we can see his treachery here. We know, that, let's, let's, be, let's be perfectly clear on this, we know that Jesus did not need to have someone close at hand to be his betrayer. The chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees were looking for a reason to arrest him, which is the right time and the place. A couple times, at least, they tried it before, and Jesus looked through their mix and says it was not in his hour. And so they were looking for a way to get rid of this troublemaker, as they saw him, Jesus. Um, and Judas simply went to them and decided he wanted in on this. He was not only going to make it easy for them, but he said, what's in it for me? What are you willing to pay me if I do it? And so they paid him 30 pieces of silver, which, according to the book of Exodus, was the price of a slave. Well, they came together for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and of course Judas was there at the Last Supper. And then Jesus used some pretty harsh words here. Woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. That's very strong. When you think of the implications, that's very, very strong. And of course, he was talking about Judas, uh, who had already uh, turned traitor. Now, Judas did go and betray Jesus, as we know. And that was a terrible thing. But Judas did something even worse later. He despaired. He despaired. He killed himself. He thought there was nothing that he could do to be forgiven. And I once heard a priest say, and it made a lot of sense, really, Judas's despair and his failure to ask forgiveness must have hurt Jesus more than the betrayal. Why? Because Jesus came to forgive sins. He came to buy us our way into paradise, to make that possible, no matter how sinful and wretched we are. Jesus was even praying for the people who put him to death and made excuses for them. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And yet, Judas did not return to Jesus and ask forgiveness. And that must have hurt Jesus. Because clearly Jesus loved him and Jesus had called him to life and had called him to be part of the new church, one of the twelve original pillars, and Judas declined. Had Judas asked Jesus for forgiveness and been restored to the apostles, he would have been the model for the repentant sinner. But that didn't happen. It did not work out that way. My friends, despair has no part in our Christian lives. We I mean, look at, look at the story of the crucifixion. We know that the apostles lost their nerve. They were scared. They ran off. They hid. They were afraid that they were in trouble too. I mean, uh, they were approaching Peter and said, hey, you're one of them. We've seen you with them. Your accent gives you away. You're, you're, and he denied it. Okay? So Peter knew that they were looking for him, and the other apostles knew that they were looking for them. They wanted to get rid of any trace of Jesus. And so the apostles went and hid which certainly was not their no, most noble moment. But they didn't despair. I'm sure they were confused. I'm sure they were sad. I'm sure all kinds of things. They didn't know what to do next. But they didn't despair. Remember, they had come to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They believed that he was the Messiah. So we can understand, at least a little bit, why they were confused. If he is the Messiah, how did this happen? How did this happen? But they didn't despair. They didn't deny that he was the Messiah. If they did, it certainly wasn't recorded. They didn't cease to have faith in him. They didn't cease to love him. And so, they kept just enough, at least just enough hope alive in their hearts that they didn't despair. And this is something very important for us to remember now because we are all facing a very uncertain future. We don't know what's coming next. We don't know what's coming next week, next month. I mean, usually we like to make our plans well ahead of time. 
Okay? And we're not able to do that right now. At least not very much. Okay? Um, but we must not despair. Just as Jesus was in control of the situation uh, uh, during Holy Week, Jesus was perfectly in control when Judas made the deal with the chief priests, when Judas betrayed him, when he was arrested, when he was scourged, when he was crucified, when he died. Jesus was completely in control. My friends, he's completely in control now. He has a purpose for all this. I'm not going to pretend to read his mind and know what it is. Okay? I imagine we'll be able to see it later on as it begins to unveil itself or reveal itself. But we do know that Jesus is completely in control. Let us continue to trust him. Okay? Hope means that quality, that, that gift, that virtue by which we can look forward to better things in the future. Certainly in the long term it means better things in heaven. And, and that's, that's a given. That's, that's central to our faith. In the short term, for us today, in April of 2020, it means that we know we're going to get through this. We know that God hasn't abandoned us. He has a plan. He has um, everything that He's planned. So let us put our trust in God. Hope and trust are very closely connected. Despair has no place in our, in our uh, Christian lives. Let us trust in Jesus. Let's keep hope alive in our hearts. Somehow, some way, we'll get through this. And somehow, some way, we will all come together again here at St. Helena to rejoice in God's goodness and offer Him the perfect sacrifice. Let us pray for the needs of the church and the world. For Pope Francis, Bishop Mulvey, our pastors, clergy, and religious, that the prayers of the faithful may empower their leadership in wisdom and humility, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who work in the medical professions and for first responders, that they may be protected from the coronavirus and every other evil as they labor under trying circumstances for our health and safety, let us pray to the Lord. For all families, that they may face these difficult times by welcoming the passion of Christ in their homes and meditating on the glory and power of the Most Holy Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. For the parishioners of St. Helena, that they may persevere in the spirit of Christ's patient suffering, let us pray to the Lord. For the abandoned, the lost, the poor, and the homeless, that our hearts may not be hardened as we hear their cries and the voice of the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick with the coronavirus, that they may encounter the fragrance of God's mercy and healing power, let us pray to the Lord. For all the souls in purgatory, let us pray to the Lord. And for Josie Reina, for whom this Mass is offered, for all the intentions that we hold in the sounds of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, hear our prayers, cleanse our souls from sin with the grace of your mercy and love, and send forth your spirit to protect us from all harm. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth, and work of human hands will come for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here, and graciously grant that, celebrating your Son's passion and mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving, passion, and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise, as we have planned. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, which was willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us ready to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Let us pray. And now, as Almighty God, with the firm conviction that through your Son's death and time, to which he, the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.